So people that know me through YouTube, it's because of this contract. This is the contract that Eric convinced me to go to YouTube on. So this was the first one that I got from my consultant client that was in Key West. It was given to us in June, late, yeah, in June. And we didn't start the work till no, actually end of November after Thanksgiving. And it's been a whirlwind to say the least, just because one, I just wanted to share it because it's very, very important that you guys know who you're working with and see some of the red flags that come up during the conversations before you take on a contract. So the first thing was that when he was estimating the job for the project, he was giving me numbers off the top of his head. That was the first mistake. Second mistake was when I was doing one of the projects with him in another area, he went ahead and took what he saw at the site visit instead of reading the scope of work and ordered seven and a half ton units that were existing instead of reading the scope of work that says replace with a 10 ton unit. So he bought all the units the wrong size, blamed it on me, told me he was going to call his lawyer, da, 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 all called me every single name, told me he was done with me, everything. <laughs> I told him, that's fine. The contract's not mine. So you could, I don't care. I'll give it back. Then afterwards, he reordered the new units and we finally started the contract December. We're supposed to start it after hurricane season. We start in December. He thought it was going to be a week max. Maria, someone asked you what industry was the contract for? It is to replace the HVAC system at the National Hurricane Center in Key West, Florida. Okay. It was four 10 ton units outside and then two Lieberts with two 20 ton Lieberts. Okay. And right. to refurbish the the units inside. All right. All right. Okay. Um, and the last task is the one that um that they want their money that they're not going to pay for, which is replace refurbish thirteen VAV boxes. So a VAV box, I've learned a lot about HVAC guys. I didn't know HVAC was an AC unit when I started. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's that bad. Oh, but now I can tell you everything. So a VAV box is basically a box that has these elements, all these little boards that they have heaters. So it in a big place like this that runs 24 hours, it doesn't allow it to get to any other temperature but that. The units don't go off or don't go on. It's just dampers open and it heats the building while it's cooling it to keep it at that exact temperature. So we got down there. It was obviously more than a week. It was a lot more work that they thought it was going to be. And they try to keep refurbishing these units. When I first heard about them trying to fix these boxes, they started, they saw that they couldn't replace the parts. They could only buy the whole box. The parts were a hundred bucks versus the box that's 1300 per box times 13 boxes. He only, as you see, only put in like $9,000 of it. We went back and forth with him um, saying, you have to do it because it's in your scope of work. We said, well, we can't do it. We keep replacing them. The, when we go back in two days, they're burned away. They're burnt off. So this one week project turned into three months. If you know Key West, Key West, the Places to stay are about 400 bucks a night. There's no hotels down there at reason. There's no hotels. There's it's nothing, $400 nothing. a night. Everything's booked up. It's not. Christmas. It's Thanksgiving no season. Four, you, you, Christmas. Yeah. It's four hours away from Miami, and it's a one-way street up, one-way street <laughs> up, down. If there's an accident, you're stuck there for another good two hours. So right. they so went it's not, back. It's not a place where you want to have a job that goes past the number of days you calculate it, <laughs> estimate it. So they go back and forth, back and forth. I went in for a 90 day inspection. I went back for the 100 day inspection. Again, as a consultant, you're not supposed to go and do the work, by the way. I was there because I always put myself in situations just because I need to make sure it's done. So I went back and forth with a person and I've, I'm like, did you guys call? So 
I called train myself. I called the manufacturer myself. They said that they don't make it, only train makes it. I called them and they were like, after I finally got through, they told us because the units are so old, they don't make replacement parts anymore. Hmm. They don't make these anymore. Okay, so let's, how can we fix something if we can't replace it? Okay, let's go, let's go back. And the, so why wasn't this done before they estimated the job? Be, exact, and that's where I said my first mistake was the fact that he gave me numbers at the top of his head, and he was not the one that went to the site visit. The technician that went to the site visit was not even there to tell me what was needed to be done. Like, I had to take the owner of the company by the hand, sit him down in front of me, and read the scope of work line by line by line by line. And he just started throwing numbers at me. And I'm like, are well, you a, sure? That, so that's a red flag. And then he, in between all that, it's a story that I tell Eric. In between all that, some, one of his tech calls, and he got mad at him. The office is divided by two. All of a sudden, I hear something being thrown across, and it goes all the way to the front door. <laughs> and he's like throwing a fit, calling this guy every single name. Then he goes into his office, and in the office, he has bottles of rum and all kinds of, and he takes a shot, and I'm nice. like. Nice. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, hey, and the like looks nice. at me. I don't know. Like, no, he goes, like crazy. And I was like, it's okay. <laughs> Like, I'm right, helping them write the proposal, and he's doing this, and I'm like, what is going on? For me, again, another red flag, I, you know. So I should have known better. In anyone, if he does that to an employee, he'll do it to anybody. He doesn't. Push. And these girls been work the girl that was helping me has been with him um, since she was 16, and she's like in. You got Demetrius over here cracking up. So... <laughs> Oh, it's stories for days, trust me. And when um, we were trying to fix it after I went to the 90-day inspection, and I was telling them, like, look, we can't fix these things because we can't get replacement parts. Your scope of work says refurbished, do, and it strictly says do not replace. Because mm. some of these units are stuck within the roofs and the ceilings were places that you really can't get to. And I told them another reason that even though we replaced one, they're burning out because your control system is from 1990. So the way the government did it is like they want us to replace the actual thing, but the controls that control it we're are burning we're, we're, out, but they won't do the controls until after we do our job. Instead of doing the controls to go ahead and sync everything up manually. It's a government contract. So it's completely <laughs> backwards. So I'm telling this to the contracting officer and to the inspector guy, and they're like, Maria, what can we do? I'm like, I do not know. We'll ask the person on site. He goes, they can't replace them. They're fixing them. They're burning out. He's, but the owner, of course, wanted to be on this conference call this time and goes, oh, we could do it. I'm like, Dude, I'm here trying to save you ten, these, another three months of work. He goes, oh, it's fine. We got it. We're professional. So it went on and on. And at that point, I was like, I'm not spending, because he told me he, they went under. We were supposed to do it for $133,000. we are already past the budget. We're at negative profits. Now, let's, okay, now part of the issue, again, let's go back, and I know you said a lot of stuff in one breath, but the first thing that happened was he bid the project for what he saw at the site, not what the scope of work said. He bid the project not seeing anything because he didn't go to the site. Okay, so, the, but the original order was different from the scope of work. Why? The original order? He said the order, he ordered different types of size units. Because the technician that went there told him that they were seven and a half tons. Right, so he bid the job based on what they saw at the site. Yes. Yeah, okay. That was a place where you guys first had a falling out. Yeah, and then I got on a conference call with every single person involved from the Department of Commerce to NOAA to the head of this to that person. And I'm like, do you guys want the owner to be on this call? They're like, no. It's like, he doesn't need to be. I'm like, okay. So it's just been – so after everything, I just like – because they can't kept coming to me when a unit went down. And then I would have to call the company so they could go back out. And I was like – you need to call the company itself. 
if you have an issue going on. They're like, isn't this your contract? I'm like, no. They're like, isn't this your company? No. I'm like, this is not mine. I'm like, all I did was help them put it together. And I explained to them what I did. And they're like, oh, so this was January, I think. So I totally like left it alone. I'm like, I'm taking my loss because I was expecting to make about eight grand out of this. If they're in the red, I'm in the red. And I'm driven. I made this drive and everything a couple of times already. So by, I'm, by like, choice. I'm like, I am done. It wasn't by choice because for that 90% inspection, if I would have not gone, nobody would have gone. But that is a, that shows very poor management of the contract by the owner. Yeah. It's not a reflection on you. It's a reflection on the company. I see it as a reflection on me because. Because your face I'm is the in front. person they know. Right. Sure. And I've worked with this person before. Right. But I understand that. But that, but again, the idea for every, the lesson that we learned from this is that you don't want to work with companies like that. No. No, no, that, no, no, no. I mean, because again, they're, they, you know, that's the, that's the whole point of this, right? The, I mean, the story's great, but what is the lesson that we all get to take so, from your experience? Four months later, I get this letter that apparently they have not finished anything and they're taking it out of their contract. So moral of the story is make sure you know who you're working with <laughs> and don't be so excited to get your first client, to get that first contract, to see six figured on there instead of because my first one was 25,000 when I saw 133 I was like oh I was excited like the excitement and the feelings and the emotions and everything took over the fact that this guy's throwing stuff all over it like this guy like he right so yeah so you miss you miss all the signals you, you look past all the signals that would have led you to believe that there's more to the person and again, I, you know, I, I see that, right? If, if he has that, if he can't have self-control with staff members who've been with him for whatever, however long, uh, he can't exhibit a, a little bit of self-control in that instance. What other things is he liable to do? And I saw that in the beginning. Like I, you didn't I, tell I, me nothing. That. <laughs> <laughs> now it's my fault, Ted. You see how it's going to be my fault? Oh, so, <laughs> hey, somebody turn around on you. And it, <laughs> Um, yeah. so, so that's why when I call, when I talk to some of you guys and when I talk to people calling in, I tell them like, just be, like, it's not easy. It's very, it's, it takes a lot of work and you have to be able to recognize and walk away at times because it's, trust me, it's not fun when it gets there. Click the join button now to find out about all of the different membership options. You can start off as a fan supporter and move your way all the way up to a GovCon insider.